Hello there guys, Mark here. I hope you are well. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a Paracord Get Back Web. Now this item has several different uses, some more legal than others. The primary use for such a web is to display the club colors of a rider. Secondly, it can be used to create distance between vehicles in traffic by basically beating away at vehicles riding too close to a motorcycle. And thirdly, sometimes it is also used in self-defense. Now, as I've mentioned, some of these uses are more legal than others. So, use the item with respect and you're going to do just fine. Here you can see an example of a Paracord Get Back Web, which I'm going to show you how to make in this video. The Get Back Web is basically defined by the three fancy knots used to decorate it. If I cover the basic build for the Get Back Web, we start off with a pineapple knot and use it to cover a pool ball. Then, we start a series of crown knots. This takes a while, and when we build a sufficient length, we attach our panic snap and tie a decorative knot to finish up the ends. Finally, I also like to add in a decorative knot right next to the pineapple knot. And that's our project. Now let's move on to the supplies. In this tutorial, I'm going to be creating a two foot long get back web. I'm also going to show you how to modify the length for a longer get back web. As far as the length of the get back web goes, three inches are taken up by the pineapple knot. Four inches are taken up by the panic snap. The rest of the length consists out of crown knots. So in a two foot long get back web, seven inches are taken up by the panic snap and pineapple knot and 17 inches by the crown knots. For a two foot long get back web, we're going to need two cords, each 27 feet long. This is enough for the pineapple knot, the crown knots, and the decorative knot next to the panic snap. The decorative knot next to the pineapple knot is optional. It is tied using two cords, each three and a half feet long. As far as other supplies go, you're going to need a panic snap. This one opens and closes like this. In my case, it is 4 inches long and you can find it in a saddlery, a leatherworking shop or online. To tie the pineapple knot, I'm going to use a Pringle scan and tie my knot onto the Pringle scan and then transfer it onto the pool ball. The Pringle scan is only one of the options. You can use a can, you can use a jar, whatever you have. The diameter just needs to be bigger than the pool ball. I'm also going to be using 
a rubber band which is going to hold one end of my cord in place. You are also going to need a pull ball which is going to act as the core for your pineapple knot. Usually, it is best to buy a whole set since this is a cheaper version than just buying an individual ball. Next, I recommend using a lacing needle to tie the various decorative knots that we're going to be making. And finally, scissors and a lighter are going to be used to cut and melt the ends of our paracord. With these supplies ready, let's begin. Let me now very briefly talk about the various possible lengths for a getback web. Usually, a getback web is created as a custom project for a specific bike. As such, the length of a getback web is determined by the height, the equipment of a bike, and so on. So, the length that you're going to make is known in advance. A two foot long getback web would be considered short. A three foot long getback web is about medium. A four foot long one is a fairly long getback web. Now, in this video, we're going to be covering the two foot long version so a fairly short one. If you want to make a longer getback web, you're going to basically just increase the length of your crown knots. To do this, you're going to need to add additional length to your two working cords. In my opinion, at least 10 feet of cord should be added for one additional foot of crown knots. Now this is a very very rough estimate, so you will want to add a couple of feet more just in case. I am now going to tie a pineapple knot. To do this, I took one of my two cords and placed it under the rubber band. This part here, on the right side, is about 12 feet long. The rest of my cord is placed under the rubber band since we're not going to use it. So for tying our knot, we're only going to be using about 12 feet of this cord. We're going to be tying an 11 part 10 byte Turk's head. Take your cord, wrap it around, pass over the standing end and around again. Pass over this cord here, take your working hand onto which I have attached a lacing needle. We're going to travel the opposite to this cord, traveling under, over, towards the left side. Like this. Come around again, and double up the standing hand. So travel alongside it under over. Like this. Now, from right to left, we are again going to travel the opposite to this cord. So over, under, over.
This again brings us to the standing end. The standing end is now doubled up. We're going to split this pair by traveling in between the two chords and doing the opposite to what they are doing. So over, under, over. Like this. And from right to left, we are again going to travel the opposite to this chord. So, under, over, under, over. Like this. Take your working hand and place it alongside the standing hand. At this point we have tied a 5 part 4 byte Turk's head. We're going to enlarge our knot by doubling up the standing hand. So we travel under, over, under, over. Like this. From right to left, we are again going to travel the opposite to this chord. So, over, under, over, under, and over. This again brings us to the doubled standing hand. Again, we're going to travel in between these two chords and we're going to do the opposite. So, over under, over under, and over. And from right to left, we are again going to travel the opposite to this chord. So under, over, under, over, under, and over. Like this. Place your working hand alongside the standing hand and at this point you have tied a 7 part 6 byte Turk's head. Continue by again enlarging the knot by doubling up the standing hand. So we went under and we continue over under Over, under, over. From right to left, we are again going to travel the opposite to this chord. So, over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. And we are again at the doubled standing hand. We're going to travel in between the two chords and do the opposite. So, over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. And 
from right to left, we're going to travel the opposite to this chord. So under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. Like this. Place your working hand alongside the standing hand. And at this point, we have tied a 9 part 8 byte Turk's head. We're going to enlarge it for a final time. Travel alongside the standing hand, doubling it up. So we started under one, then over under, over under, over under, and over. From right to left, we now travel the opposite to this chord. So over under, over under, over under, over under, and over. Now we're going to split the doubled standing hand. Travel in between the chords and do the opposite. So over under, over, under, over under, over, under, and over. And from right to left, we're going to travel the opposite to this chord. So, under, over, under, over. Under, over, under, over, then finally under, and over. Please your working hand alongside the standing hand and this completes our bass knot. Now, as you saw, this knot is getting a bit too tight. This is why I'm going to place my working hand under the rubber band and work in either a bit of my working hand or standing hand back into the knot. This is going to get some slack into the knot and make it easier to work with when I'm going to begin using my second chord. So basically loosen up and even out your knot before we're going to begin our interweave. I have now loosened up my knot. I'm going to introduce the second color of cord by tucking it under the rubber band onto the left side of the first standing end. In my working hand, I have about 12 feet of cord. The rest 
is tucked under the rubber band here on the left side. I have placed a lacing needle onto the working end. To start the interweave, we're going to travel under two alongside the first standing end. So under two, then follow the cord on the left side. So over under, over under, over under, and over under. We do not exit on the right side, but stop at an under one. Now, from the right side to the left, we're going to start our sequence again with an under one. So we end it with an under one, and we start our next sequence with an under one as well. So under one, then follow the chord to the right. So over under, over under, Over under, over and under. Again, we do not exit the knot on the left side. We stop at an under one. So here on the right side, you can see how my second chord turns around back into the knot. On the left side, we continue again starting our sequence with an under one. Then we follow the chord on the left. So over under, over under, Over under, over and under. We do not exit on the right side. And again, on the left side, you can see how the chord turns back into the knot, like this. On the right side, we are again going to start our sequence with an under. But this time, under two, in order to split a pair of parallel strands. So under two, then simply continue following the chord to the right. So, over under, over under, over under, over under. Again, we do not exit the knot here on the left. Now, on the left side, we have the same situation. We're going to start with an under. Since we have a pair of parallel strands, we're going to split them by starting our sequence under two. So, under two, then follow the chord to the left. So, over under, 
over under over under over and under now on the right side we again begin our sequence with an under again splitting a pair of parallel strands. So under two, then continue over two to split the next pair of parallel strands. So over two and under one. Again, following the chord to the right. So over under, over under, over under, like this. On the left side, we again repeat the same process. So under two, the split a pair, over two, the split a pair, then follow the chord to the left. So under one, over one, under one, over one. Under, over and under. On the right, we now have three pairs of parallel strands to split. We start under two, over two and under two. Then, Continue by following the chord on the right side. So over under, over under, over under. On the left side, we repeat the process. Under two, the split a pair, over two, the split a pair, under two, the split another pair. Then continue over under, over under, over under, like this. As you can probably expect, we now have an additional pair of chords to split. So this time we start under two, over two, under two, over two, then follow the chord on the right. So under one, over under, over under. And again, from left to right, we repeat the process. Under two, over two, under two, over two. Then follow the chord on the left. Under. Over under. Over under. From right to left, we have another pair to split. So, under two, over two, under two, over two, 
under 2, then follow the chord on the right side. So over under, over under. Now from left to right we have exactly the same situation. We start under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2. Then follow the chord on the left side, so over under, over under. Now, from right to left, we have yet another pair to split. We start under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, under over and under, like this. And again, from left to right, we repeat the process. So, under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, then follow the chord on the left, under, over, under, like this. And we have yet another pair to split. From right to left, we travel, under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, over and under. And we repeat the same process from left to right. So, under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, over and under. From right to left, again, we have another pair to split. We start off under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, and under 1. And from left to right, we repeat the process. Under 2, over 2, under 2, Over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, over 2, and under 1. Like this. Now, 
travel from right to left, under to, over to, under to, over to, under to, over to, under to, over to and under one. Now place your working hand alongside the second standing hand traveling under two. And this completes the interweave. Take the working hand and for now place it under the rubber band. At this point we have a pineapple knot interweave. We are now going to prepare it to transfer it onto our pulled ball. We now have an interesting task in front of us. What we need to do is bring the four ends of our cords to about the middle point in our knot. This way they're going to exit at the center and we can continue with our crown knots. So here is a practical example. I have my pineapple knot and all four ends are exiting at the center of the knot. So not on one side or the other, but at the center. So to do this, what I like to do is to find one cord that is already exiting at the center. So in this case, the standing end of my second cord is here exiting at a space about at the middle. What I'm going to do is double up my standing end using the working end. I'm going to follow it over to under to, then over one and under one just to get it to the same spot. Like this. At this point you can remove the standing hand like this and the two ends are coming out out of the same opening. So this is what we want. Now we need to do the same thing with the other two ends. Bring them out out of this opening. So to do this I'm first going to take my working hand and double up the standing hand up to this opening. So I'm going to start over to under to, over to, under to, and under one additional strand to come to basically the same opening. So here. Then I'm going to take the standing hand 
and to remove it. I'm going to need to bring it under one And now all four ends are coming out at the center of the knot. Now this is not the only way to do it. Usually I just improvise until I find a way to get all four ends to the same spot. The next step is going to be to even out the two pairs of strands. Basically, we want all four ends to be of the same length. So, for example, here the two ends are not of the same length. The working end is very short and the standing end is very long. I'm going to take the long cord, so the standing end and work it partly into my knot. Then I'm going to work through through the entire knot until I bring this slack out of the working end. And finally you pull out the slack into your short working end. So, as I have mentioned, the goal is to roughly get the same length for the two ends. Now you're going to get additional chances to even out the two ends when you're tightening your knot onto the pulled ball. For now, take the other two ends, compare them, and see which one is longer. In my case, the standing end is again quite a bit longer than the working end. So again, work and slack into the standing end and work it through the knot into the working end. And again, we pull in the slack into the shorter end. Like this. After getting the four ends to about the same length, I'm going to take a pull ball and transfer the knot onto it. So something like this. Now I'm going to begin tightening. I start with one cord. In my case I like to start with the interweave. So the second cord. I start at an end and start pulling out slack into the other end. So I'm going to go through the entire knot pulling out slack. You don't have to do this terribly tightly since we're going to do several passes of tightening. And finally you pull out the slack into your other end. Like this. We now have our base knot to tighten up as well. So I start at one of the two ends. 
and I basically run the slack through the entire knot and into the other end. And finally, we pull our slack into one of the ends. So this has been one pass of tightening. I'm going to do one to two more. At this point, you're going to want to align the ball inside, perhaps to show a number, Perhaps you want to hide it. It is a personal preference. You want it aligned neatly on both sides. We're going to begin tightening by again taking a cord. In our case, we're going to start with the longer of the two. Work some slack into the knot and again run it around the knot. After tightening up the pineapple knot and making sure that all four ends are of equal length, we're going to continue with a series of crown knots. These are very simple to do, but you need to do quite a few. These are going to add most of the length to your get back whip. To start off, spread apart your cords one to each side. So like this, I have two cords of one color, the opposite to each other, and two cords of the other color opposite as well. I'm going to continue by tying crown knots in the counterclockwise direction. Take a strand, it doesn't matter where you start. Pass it counterclockwise over the next strand. Take the next strand and pass it counterclockwise over the next strand. Take the next strand, pass it counterclockwise over the next strand, and the final strand is going to pass into the loop created by the first strand. So here, through the loop, like this. So if you tie it your crown knot correctly, this is what you should get. Tighten it up. We tighten up by basically pulling on all of our ends. Do it very firmly. So something like this. The crown knot once it is tightened up, is of a square shape. Continue again, taking one of the cords, again it doesn't matter where you start it. Pass it counterclockwise over the next strand. 
like this. Take the next strand counterclockwise over the next one. So like this. Take the next strand and again pass it counterclockwise over the next one. And the last of our strands passes into the loop created by the first strand. Like this. So again, this is the crown knot before you tighten it up. Tighten it up by pulling on all of the ends. Do it as firmly as you can. Then simply continue. Again, we're going to start off by taking one of the strands. Pass counterclockwise over the next one. Take the next strand and pass counterclockwise over the next strand. Take the next strand and again pass counterclockwise. The last of your strands is going to pass into the loop created by the first strand. So here, through the loop. And again, we have another crown knot. So this is how it looks like before tightening it up. Tighten it up by pulling on all of the ends. You want your crown knots to be as tight as you can make them. And you can see a bit of your pattern beginning to form. It's going to be a spiral pattern like this. We're going to continue tying crown knots. We're going to make as many as we need to get a length for our get back web minus the 4 inches for the panic snap. So in a 2 foot long get back web, we're going to make enough crown knots for the length of the web to be 20 inches. Adding the panic snap, we're going to get 24 inches or 2 feet. After lining up about 17 inches of crown knots, I'm going to introduce the panic snap. There are a ton of ways for attaching it, I'm going to show you one which uses crown knots. Since we are already familiar with this technique, it should be a piece of cake. So we're going to start a crown knot. Take a strand, pass over the second cord. The second cord passes through the panic snap 
and over the third chord. The third chord passes over the last of our chords and the last of our chords passes through the panic snap and into the loop created by the first chord. And this ties a crown knot. Now to make this attachment a bit stronger, I'm going to feed the two cords which are not passing through the panic snap through it. So the bottom one passes towards the top. And the top one passes through to the bottom. Then tighten up firmly. Then simply repeat for a second time. Take a chord, pass over the second chord. The second chord passes through the panic snap, like this, and over my third chord. The third chord is going to pass over the last of our chords. And the last of our chords is going to pass through the panic snap into our first loop. Like this. And again, we're going to pass the two chords which are not traveling through the panic snap through it. So the top one passes towards the bottom and the bottom one passes towards the top. Then firmly tighten up. And we're going to repeat this process for a final time. Take a chord, pass over the second chord. The second chord passes through the panic snap. The third chord is going to pass over the last of our chords and the last of our chords is going to pass through the panic snap and into our first loop. And again, you should have a crown knot. Again, pass the two chords not traveling through the panic snap through it. So the top one passes towards the bottom. And the bottom one passes towards the top. Now very firmly tighten up.
like this. At this point, we're going to finish up the four ends with a decorative knot. We are now going to finish up the four working ends using a decorative knot. Pick up the four ends like this. They should run parallel and not cross each other. Wrap them around your crown knots three times. So once twice and three times. I'm now going to weave the four working hands through the 12 strands wrapping around my crown knots. Take your first working hand and do a simple under one over one sequence through the 12 chords. So under over under over under over under over under over under over So we did six unders, six overs. Take the next chord, so the second one, and do the exact same sequence. This time, starting under the previous end that you used. So under over, under over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. So again, six unders, six overs. Pick up the next chord and do the same sequence, but this time starting under the second chord that you used. Under, over. Under, over. Under, over. Under, over. Under, over, under, and over. So again, six unders and six overs. Take the last of your chords and pass under the previous chord that you used. So the third one. Passing in the same sequence, so under over, under over, under over, under over, under over, under and over. like this. Now we're going to double up our knot by traveling from the left side towards the right side. Pick out one of the strands, it doesn't matter where you start. Remember that we finished our sequences with an over one. 
So let's say we're going to start with this strand. So over one on the left, then pass under the next working hand, coming parallel to a strand on the left. Follow the strand on the left all the way to the right side. So over under. Over under. Over under. Over under. Over under. And finally, over on the right side. So essentially, we have doubled up the chord to the left. Then, pick out the next chord. So this one, which is now traveling over two when it finishes up its sequence. Then, pass under your next working hand like this. Coming parallel to a strand on the left. Double it up using your working hand. So, over under, Over under. Over under. Over under. Over. Under. And finally over on the right side. Take the next working hand, which is again finishing its sequence over two. Pass under the next working hand, which brings you parallel to a strand on the left. Double it up, traveling towards the right side. So, over one, under one. Over, under. Over, under. Over, under. Over, under, and over. Now, take your last end on the left, which again is finishing its sequence going over two. Pass under the next working end which has already been used. So under it, which brings you parallel to a strand on the left. Follow it to the right side. So over under, over, under, Over under. Over under. Over 
over, under, and finally over. In our last sequence, we're going to basically bring the pattern together. To do this, take one of the ends. Pass from the right side to the left in an under 2 over 2 sequence. So under 2, basically under the next working end. Then over to under to and so on. As you can see, every time you do an over to under to, you split a pair of parallel strands. And you finish up on the left, going over to. Take the next end. And again, start off under to. Then continue over to under to. And so on to the left side. Finishing up on the left side with an over 2. Take the next working hand and again under 2. Then continue to the left side going over to under 2 and so on. We finish up on the left side over 2. The last of our ends again starts under 2. Then continues over to under 2. Over to under 2 and so on. Again, finishing up on the left side, going over to. To finish up the knot, I'm going to bring all of my ends under the knot to the right side. This is a fairly simple process. You take an end. In my case, I'm going to be using a lacing needle. 
You can also use a Morlan spike, create a gap, and feed an ant through it. If you remember, we finished each sequence with an over 2. Then immediately pass under the knot to the right side. Take the next end Pass over 2 on the left, then immediately under and through the knot. And the next end. Over 2, then immediately under the knot. and out on the right side. And the last end, over to, then immediately, under and through the knot. And this finishes up our knot. As you can see, it has quite a bit of slack in it. To fix this, you start tightening it up by finding a cord coming out of a crown knot. So in my case, for example this one, pull it through the entire knot, and out out of one of the working ends. And we're going to do this with all four ends. So find a strand coming out of a crown knot. Then remove the slack through the knot and into one of the working ends. After tightening up my decorative knot, the main part of this project is complete. I'm going to introduce a second decorative knot next to the pineapple knot. This one is completely optional. Take two cords, each three and a half feet long. We're going to push them through a crown knot here at the start. And the other cord as well. Like this. Now, before we begin tying, make sure that all four ends are of equal length.
We can now begin tying. We are now going to tie our decorative knot. The knot is very similar to the previous one that we tied, but we are only going to do two wraparounds around our crown knots. So two wraparounds instead of three. Pick up your working hands and make sure they are lined up. They should not cross one another. Then wrap around two times. So once, twice. We're going to continue weaving our ends through the eight cords wrapping around our crown knots. Take your first cord and begin a sequence of under over, under over, under over, under and over. So basically we did four unders and four overs. Take your next chord, so the second one, and do the same sequence, but starting under the previous chord that we used. So under over, under over, under over, under over. So again, we have four unders and four overs. Take the next chord and do the same sequence starting under the second chord. Under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. And the final strand is now going to start its sequence under the third chord. So under, over, under over, under over, under over. And this brings us onto the left side. We are now going to continue doubling up the knot from left to right. Take an end. It doesn't matter where you start. It is finishing up its sequence by going over one. Pass under the next working hand like this, then double up the cord on the left. So over under, over. Under, over, under, and over on the right side. Take the next working hand, which is now finishing its sequence over two. Pass under the next working hand coming alongside the cord to the left. Double it up. So over under, over, under, over, under, and over on the right side. Take 
the next working ant, which again finishes its sequence over two. Continue passing under the next working ant and double up the chord on the left, over under, over, under, over, under, and over on the right side. And the last chord again finishes its sequence going over to pass under the working hand, which has already been used. So under, then follow the chord on the left, over under, over, under, over under, and over on the right side. We are now going to take one of the chords on the right side and travel to the left side in an under 2 over 2 sequence. So under 2, like this, then over 2, and under 2, and over 2, and under 2, over 2, under 2, and over 2 on the left. Take the next working hand, and again do the same thing. So under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, and over two on the left. Take the next working hand and again under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, over to under two and over two on the left and the last working hand again starts under two over two under two Over two, under two. Over two, under two. And over two on the left. We are now going to finish up the four ends by taking one of the ends and making sure that it exits over two out of the knot. Then, simply pass the end under the knot to the right side. Like this. Take the next end Again, 
Make sure that it exits over 2. Then, under the knot and to the right side. And the next end exits over 2. Then enters under the knot all the way to the right side. And our last end over 2, then under the knot, all the way to the right side. And this finishes up the knot. We are now going to remove the slack starting here so by taking the cord which is coming out of the crown knot and running that cord through the entire knot and into one of the working hands. Then simply pick out the next cord to tighten up. Again, it's coming out of the crown knot. Pull it through the entire knot. and into one of the ends. So in this case, into this working hand. Do this with all four ends, at which point we're going to do our finishing touches. So after tying the two decorative knots, and properly tightening them up, we're going to trim the ends as close to our knots as possible. Then very lightly melt the ends without burning the surrounding cords. So something like this. Now take your lacing needle and push the ends under the knot, just to hide them out of sight.
so something like this. Now let's move on to another step that really improves the look of your knots. As my very final step, I'm going to place my knot onto the edge of the table, take a plank and roll it. So take a look at the knot before the rolling process. So, after a bit of rolling, the knot gets a lot more consistency. I'm going to do some more rolling, but for now, this knot looks very attractive. We have finally completed our get back whip. It was quite a journey, since the tutorial itself is an hour and a half long. The making process does get quite a bit faster once you get used to it. There is still a lot of room for improvement, for different variations in length, color, decorative knots and so on. I hope that I made this tutorial clear enough. Please do post a comment with your feedback if you get the chance. Thank you very much for joining me today and I hope to see you in my future tutorials as well.